So we're here with Larry Burns, who's Vice President of R&D and... Strategic Planning. Strategic Planning for uh, General Motors. And um, Larry is sort of at ground zero of new automotive design um, as it stands today. And he's the first keynoter at uh, the 44th Design Automation Conference. So tell us a little bit about... You're going to talk today about um, automotive DNA. Yes. Describe that a little bit, because that's an interesting yeah. tag. You know, 120 years ago, when the automobile was first developed, it was uh, energized by petroleum, powered by an internal combustion engine, and controlled mechanically. Here we are 120 years later, which is pretty much the same DNA of an automobile. If you look at other industries, communications, for example, they've changed radically in terms of their fundamental technology makeup. But our cars are 98% dependent on petroleum. Almost all of them have internal combustion engines. And while there are more electronic controls on cars today than in the past, they're still predominantly mechanical devices. We think um, a number of opportunities are converging now to truly replace the DNA with a whole new DNA. And this would be one of them. This is the sequel. Sequel actually is a real car that re reflects the new DNA. Instead of petroleum, it's using hydrogen. We see the future DNA of the automobile being based on electrically driven cars and trucks that use electricity and hydrogen as their energy carriers. Sequa also has electronic controls. It's steered by wire, brakes by wire, chassis is controlled electronically. It uses a fuel cell to create the electricity from hydrogen. So that future DNA is fuel cells, electric motors, and batteries instead of internal combustion engines. And then the controls are electronic instead of mechanical. And then SQL also is connected. It uses telematics, our OnStar system right. in particular. So now we've got this vehicle that can be very interdependent with all the other cars on the road uh, uh, through, through telematics. So that whole new DNA, electrically driven cars and trucks that e emit nothing, essentially, still can give you all the excitement and driving dynamics that customers are, are expecting. And SQL is a representation of all of that. So this uh, sequel, though, is, is not, uh, how far away from production is it? Well, actually, a sequel is a forerunner to a vehicle that we call the Chevrolet Equinox fuel cell. And we're in the process now of building over 100 of the Chevrolet Equinox fuel cells that will be put into the hands of real customers here in uh, Southern California, Washington, D.C., and New York. We'll play that out, get the learnings from the, this market test. We call it Project Driveway. Then uh, sometime 2010, 2011, you'll see us stepping up to our next uh, uh, play, maybe something on the order of 1,000, so we can really begin to learn in real-world settings everything we need to know to go to mass, mass production. So I think you're going to be looking at technology that's pretty much proven in terms of its capabilities by the end of this decade, that hopefully 2013 to 2015 will we'll really begin to start work toward that tipping point for these kinds of cars and trucks. So f for GM, is is fuel cell um, a leapfrogging strategy, right? Because today hybrids are all the rage. Yeah. Um, and fuel cells, in, in a sense, I mean, you, you're, you're putting a lot of eggs in, in that basket. Yeah, well, it's, it's one basket that we've put eggs into, but actually our strategy is to displace petroleum. We think the auto industry is very vulnerable, being 98% dependent on petroleum. Whether the issue is global climate change, energy independence or the economic impact of importing so much petroleum, we just don't think for business reasons it makes a whole lot of sense to be 98% dependent on petroleum. So how do you displace petroleum with energy diversity? And we see a lot of energy diversity opportunities for cars and trucks in the form of ethanol or E85, biological fuels. We have over uh, 2 million such vehicles on the road today in the United States. Beyond that, we see electrically driven cars and trucks as truly the new DNA. So we have the fuel cell play. We also have what we call a range extender electric vehicle. Uh, you may have heard of the Chevrolet Volt, which we showed mm -hmm. at the North American Auto Show. That really is where we're headed longer term in the future. We've got an electrically driven vehicle. That's the leapfrog over a hybrid. This is a purely electrically driven vehicle. Hybrids are mechanically and electrically driven, therefore mm -hmm. they're more complicated. But with purely electrically driven vehicles, it can make them simpler. And they're all about creating and storing electricity on board the vehicle. You can store electricity in a lithium-ion energy battery. You can also store it, interestingly, as hydrogen. 
and then you can right. create it on board with a fuel cell or with an internal combustion engine running a generator. So the simplicity is electrically driven, creating and storing electricity on board the vehicle, and do that on um, a vehicle that has flexibility on how, how you approach it. That's where we're headed. So we don't think we have our eggs in one basket. I think we've got some really nice eggs baskets. and the bigger basket of energy diversity, and that's what we're really trying to, 